What's up, guys? We are back. Fitness, Profit, Multiplier, Anthony and Jimmy. Today, we're going to be discussing all things small group training programming. And why this is actually important, why this is actually a thing. Because I think a lot of people now, all of the gurus out there are touting, you need to change your business model right now. You need to change your business model right now. You need to be doing small group personal training. So now you'll have guys who have large group facilities basically condensing down to a small group and trying to do the same programming for that. And that is not going to work. So we're going to give you the actual tips and tricks on how to actually program for your small group training. But Big Jimmy, what's up, man? How you doing today? Doing well. If you guys are watching on YouTube and you've been watching for a little while, you'll notice my glorious mustache today. So you're welcome. But um, <laughs> you're right, Anthony. All the gurus out there are saying like, switch to small group, switch to small group. And it's like this post-COVID era of business coaching where everybody's like, now we need to change the model when they should have been running this model the entire time anyway, or some model similar. And it's like, oh, now we need to change the model to make yourself recession proof or whatever everybody's saying now. And I'm like, the damage has been done. Like, I don't know. I don't know who you're helping right now, you know, but we do think the small group model is superior um, to most other models. Uh, so, but if you're in a market where you want to, where you should be doing it, model like a large group model or, or more of a private one-on-one -on -one model or whatever, your market will kind of dictate what's going to work best. And, and, and just because when COVID came or when, when the virus came down, um, the trigger word or what, but when the virus came around, um, it shut down all these bigger group places. Doesn't mean that that was the wrong model. It doesn't mean that that is what hamstring you. It doesn't mean that that you were doing something wrong by choosing a large group model because just because a virus came through and you know then the government came down and said you can only have so many people in your facility right that doesn't mean you were wrong by using that model uh and switching to small group now doesn't necessarily mean it's going to protect you from something in the future but i just wanted to, those are my two cents on the all the guru small group switch to small group talk that's out there now yeah, I mean, I think one of the major things, and we've talked about this too, like the main benefit to actually switching to a small group model is you're a brick and mortar gym. You're only going to get a certain amount of people around you. So regardless of if you do large group or small group, you're still going to get around 100 to 200 people tops in your gym Right. So uh, for personal training. So you might as well charge those 100 to 200 people premium instead of charging them low price and trying to play that game. So and we've, we've done a whole podcast on that. You can click the link below. You could listen to why our thoughts are on that. But yeah. I want to explain today programming. Like, okay, so now I'm going to switch to this model. I'm only going to have six people. How do you program for them? What do you do? What's the routine like? Because it's not like one-on-one -on -one where you could no. literally write an individual program. But it's also not like large group where it's like the workout of the day. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of programming. I mean, me and Jimmy's philosophy, we both compete in powerlifting. Uh, we've both competed in bodybuilding. We've done, you know, strength sports at a high level. So our backgrounds are pretty similar in that. So we program very, I don't want to say similar to that, but very similar to how a strength athlete would program for their clients. So Jimmy, why don't you take it away here? Let's talk about programming and, and kind of like our philosophy on that. Yeah. And Anthony and I both have uh, bachelor's degrees in the subject matter as well. So um, it's not one of these things that's fly by night. We're just some meathead guys that are in the trenches making all our 40 year old women power lift. Right. That's not what it is. <laughs> Although I got to say, Jimmy has <laughs> most of his clients. It blows my mind. They actually one of his things in his gym. It's like, I guess it's part of his culture is. They compete in powerlifting meets. So Jimmy yeah. has women in their 50s and 60s competing in powerlifting meets, which every time I see it, I get mind blown because my clients have no desire to do that at all. But, yeah. you know, the, the, it's great that you're able to actually do that with your clients. But that's a whole nother side note. Right, right. That's like 15% of our members. It's not, it's not, do not take this podcast and go, I want to get my 60 year olds to compete in powerlifting. That's not what has made my business successful. Let's just, let's just put it out there. Um, it's fun, but um, so when we look at the programming, 
uh, just like Anthony said, right? You don't want to program them like work out of the day because it's small group. And you don't want to program them like one-on-one -on -one because that's too much work for your staff to manage, right? So we look at either side of this. We have to find something kind of in the middle that we've deemed house programming, right? So we have house programming and then we have individualized programming for an upsell, right? In our small group model. But with the house programming, there are certain things you modify with that programming to make it specific to each member, depending on their intake, right? So, and you can make it very streamlined. So it takes a lot of work out of your um, staff's bucket and just allows them to run the play, right? So in a nutshell, and this is not something you should share in a sales meeting with your with your prospective member, right? But well, first of all, guys, if you're talking about your programming in your sales meeting, you are in big trouble and you need to click trouble. the link below because you should not be. Never. We actually have a podcast that we're going to be doing a topic all on this same subject. So yeah. make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. If that's what you're yeah. doing in your sales sessions, never do big it. Big mistake. Don't do that, guys. Please don't do that. So here's here's the science, a little bit of science component. So we do um, linear block periodization with our members, right? So we take them through endurance block, hypertrophy block, submax, kind of submax strength block, and a peaking like strength block, right? Some of our members elect to go to full max their lifts. Some of our members don't, and that's fine, and that's part of the customization, right? And then we have certain movements they're going to focus on or certain results they're going to focus on, depending on what they want to pick. So the small group member comes into the gym. Your coach goes, hey, what did you do last time you were in the gym? Or what are you looking to do today? Right? They track everything in their binder. They track it themselves with the weights that they used and the workout that they did. So if they are at a loss, they're like, I don't know what to do your coach will look at their binder and say, okay, we're going to do this workout next because you did this yesterday or you did this two days ago. So they can make that kind of programming, that educated programming input in that moment when the client walks into the gym, they get greeted, they get told what they're going to do for that day, depending on what they did before. So that all your coaches are kind of on the same page and they can on the fly change things for that member. And then on top of that programming, there are progressions and regressions to every movement pattern so that you're being mindful of injury mechanism as well as specific needs of that member. So we have that all built out in our back end, and all of our staff gets trained on it first thing when they come and become a, a staff member at our facility. Uh, and the programming is all the same. So any staff member can plug into a session. Say a staff member is out of town, you lose somebody like at a moment's notice. You can plug another staff member directly into that session and they don't miss a beat because the house programming is all the same. And we talk about it with our staff the entire time. Um, we could get into like the nitty gritty details of it, but that's a general overview of like how we program and how we train our people. Yeah, I like the house programming analogy and that's a great coin. We're, we're coining it here. That's a great coin phrase yeah. to use as house programming because we do this very, very similar to it. Um, we don't, you know, you have to kind of cater to your market. And Jimmy, like I said, for some reason in Seattle, <laughs> Jimmy's clients like to compete in powerlifting. In New York here where I am, they don't. They have no desire to do any of that. So what we do is we just, we do linear periodization as well, but we don't bring them down that low in reps. We keep it maybe like eight, six max, and then we just kind of cycle between the two, and then we go through there. So every month, our house programming changes. We change up the workouts. So we have the way we do it, um, we keep that base structure. So obviously they have their main movement, squats, deadlifts, bench press, you know, overhead press, inverted rows, pull-ups, those types of movements. And then we have workouts kind of designed around each one of those. But again, in client lingo talk. So we have like a, a leg glute focus day, you know, and our clients get to pick what they want to do for the day. So we have an arm blast, which actually, believe it or not, is one of the favorites of clients. That's the same thing here. Yeah. We have like a bodybuilding day and it's like, you know, a bunch of dumbbell work for the upper body. 
they do like side raises and bicep curls and all that stuff. And people choose that one a ton. So, so the, we, yeah. we, we coined it, we named it arm blast. So nice. and we did this, right? Okay. Arm blast. The guys are going to do this is perfect for the guys. 99% of the women do that. And the yeah. guys do legs. Yeah. hundred percent. Like, I'm like, what, what day is this? Where, where do we live? But yeah, we have, um, and again, we cycle through these things. So for next month, we're doing uh, what we're calling a form day, which is basically going to be like, and we also program deloads. We have like a deload kind of like month almost where it's almost like focusing on form. So what we're going to do for next month is we're going to call like form day and we have all the major movements and it's just focusing on form so that they're training very suboptimal that day. But because we have some people coming like, I'm really tired today. I don't feel like doing it. And I think that by adding that in there, they, they have an option where they could still make progress and it's like okay it's my form day i'm focusing on that so you have to really kind of play with that but having that house programming for them and giving the clients and this is what we found so to be so successful is giving the clients the autonomy to pick has make a huge difference because we used to do kind of i don't want to say work out of the day because we did house programming and we basically did a six day grow up in six days we did a six day a week routine and then every time the clients came in, it was just, okay, you're doing Thursday's workout. And it's just, every day was a full body. And it worked, but I think giving the clients the ability to choose has made so much more of a difference for them, giving them that that feel of, um, you know, wow, this is really what I want to do today. So, and, and it's funny because you'll hear clients like, okay, I'm avoiding the leg day because it's brutal. Or you'll hear like, we have a leg day and then we have like a glute focused leg day where it's more like hip dominant movements, you know, deadlifts, sumo deadlifts, those kind of things. And uh, it's so funny. We have women who come in like three, four days a week and they're like, okay, I'm going to do the glute workout twice this week. I'm going to do the leg workout once. And then I'm going to do a, a full strength. It's like, it's so funny how they pick their own programming, but they love it. And it works. It works out great. The, the level of autonomy is something that gets a client to buy in more. So, and I learned this from, I can't remember if it was, Nick Winkleman or or Brett Bartholomew will kind of like name drop those two thought leaders in the industry. Um, can't remember which book it was from, but one of those two guys talked about how if you give a client some autonomy, where you it's as simple as saying, "Hey, they're deadlifting with a kettlebell, right?" For example, and you say, "You want to work with a red kettlebell or a green kettlebell today?" Right? One's heavier than the other, and they pick the heavier one or the less heavy one, depending on what they want to do, you give them those opportunities. That's a little way you can put autonomy in there. But we suggest that you give them the autonomy of selecting what workout they want to do. And every now and then you have to be a coach and say, Hey, no, you haven't squatted in two weeks. You're going to squat today. Right. But, um, but giving them that sense of autonomy allows them to have more buy-in because they are involved in the decision-making that is part of their experience. Right. So giving that sense of autonomy helps with retention um, and it helps just have a better client experience overall. So if you don't have a sense of autonomy or little sense of autonomy in your coaching, start to implement some things. It's very easy to implement the like getting them to decide if they want to do rows with a TRX or they want to do rows with dumbbells. Right. Um, it's not that hard. Like like that. Those things are kind of synonymous. Right. It's like as long as our technique's good. You can get them to choose because it doesn't really matter what what movement they do. Um, now, certain things do matter, right? If somebody has a pre-existing knee issue, you don't want them barbell squatting to full depth, right? You want them doing a box squat. You want them doing some goblet squat variation. You want to implement some things that are going to get their glutes a little more active during the movement so they can protect the knee a little more. And you have to make those intelligent decisions as a coach. But think about the things that don't matter in terms of autonomy and the things that do and give them the ability to select those things that don't matter in the grand scheme of things autonomy wise. It doesn't matter if they do, you know, a bodybuilding workout or an arm blast workout twice a week, as long as they get their legs once, right. It doesn't matter. And it neither here nor there too, as long as they're coming in and working out, I mean, you guys got to remember these, these aren't elite level athletes that are coming into your facility, NFL players, you know, uh, competitors, bodybuilders, yeah, your average person who, if they just show up at your facility two, three times a week, they're going to get results because they just showed up. So if yeah. they want to come in and do arms and and totally skip legs, 
I mean, it's not the ideal choice, but at least they're in. Whereas mm-hmm. if you didn't give them the autonomy, and this has happened to us in the past, where, you know, uh, you know, the client has to come in and they have to do legs. And they're like, I just don't want to do it. And they would kind of like get like, get like, not annoyed, but like, they just don't want to do it. They're just not, you know, legs is brutal. You know, doing a, a, yeah. a leg session, a squat session is brutal. And some people just don't want to do it. And if they're going to be intimidated by it, especially in the beginning, let them just come in. As long as they're coming, it's like, this is the way I look at it. If I'm going to get a client to come and commit to, let's just say three times a week. So 12 sessions a month. And they're going to, I want them to do that for 36 months. You know, if they are intimidated and I force them to do legs, let's just say six times in the month. And they're like, oh, I can't do this. It's too much. I can't do it. Whereas now if they only do legs three times every month, but they're staying the full distance, well, let them do legs three times. Who cares? As long as they're coming in, because ultimately coming in is going to be better than not doing anything anyway. Right. So that's just my two cents on that. No, hundred percent. Like we're in the business of getting people committed, accountable, and motivated to actually make a change and make a habitual change in their life. Right. And if that means they prefer to do certain lifting patterns and they enjoy those lifting patterns, at least they're not on the couch, man. Like that's what we're in the business of doing. Like you go to school and you get all this education and you, and you understand these things so intimately, but in reality, the money exists in the client who is not an elite athlete, the client who is not somebody that needs that detailed programming. You're not some influencer that can grab the entire world and show your your specific knowledge to the entire world and actually get those those uh specific clients right that's not who you are you're an independent local gym owner who a majority of people on this planet are people that struggle to commit to even taking a walk once a day right they struggle to commit to even understanding anything about their nutrition, right? So these are the types of people we cater to. So if you're still in that mindset of like, oh, well, I'm a, you know, I want to train elite college athletes. Have fun renting a cheap piece of crap apartment for the rest of your life, because that's what it's going to be like. And sorry, that's kind of tough love, but the money is not there. The money is in 40 plus women that are looking to look better naked, feel better about their body, feel more confident and, um, you know, just live a healthier life and be able to do more into their, into their older years. That's where the money is. Couldn't agree more, man, with that. That was, that was good. One of the things I wanted to touch on too, is because most people are going to, I'm sure are probably thinking right now, well, okay, well that covers the strength portion of it. What about cardio? You know, we got to get the people doing cardio. Um, cardio is not one of the things that we actually do in my facility, period. Um, so that's just, I'm going to put that out there. But if I was to program cardio in, so we, the way we have our training set up, we basically have our training set up into because we have to be very time efficient with our stuff. We have our training basically broken up into three blocks. We have our main strength kind of block where it's like, you know, the big compound movements. Then we have another block which is again, maybe not, maybe like a nice um, accessory movements to that. And then the last block is usually like accessory movements. So like if it's a, a pressing day, it's laterals, flies, things like that. And that's kind of like more of a faster pace, like pump kind of workout. So this way when they leave, they feel like, ah, yeah, I did something today. You know, because sometimes if you just do heavy sets of squats, especially for low reps, you're not going to get much of a pump and you'll feel it, but it's just like, you know, it, it, it's not that much. You want them to feel it when they leave, especially when they leave. That's really important. So what I would do then if I was programming and wanted to add cardio in there is I would just take that last block and make it a metabolic finisher and just do something metabolically challenging to kind of, you know, whatever, if they're going to, if you have in your facility, you know, rowers and ski ergs and this and that, you know, you have them superset that with other things, jump on there 30 seconds, jump off, do this, and like a Tabata type thing for your last kind of block of it so they get the best of both worlds or you could just have a cardio day set up for them where it's just okay you want to come in you're going to do cardio today although i don't think that that i don't know i don't have it on there so i can't say this i know you have it on there but i wouldn't think that clients would pick that day no we actually got rid of it recently 
Oh, did uh, you? Okay, good. Yeah. So we decided to add an additional full body option um, as opposed to having a cardio centric day because we realized that only like five of our members, we have 200 members and five of them were doing cardio. So we're like, why do we have this on the board? So we got rid of it. We added an additional like full body variation um, that was more focused on squat because our other full body was kind of more focused on deadlift um, as a starter. So, but we follow that same protocol where you have the last movement of the workout is metabolic in nature. So you get that afterburn effect and you can explain this component when you're explaining your um, programming to people, you can explain this component, right? When you explain your programming, you explain the components in such a way that's not like the X's and O's of the training. You're like, oh, and we'll have you do some cardiovascular work at the end of your workout so that you can get the afterburn effect, which means you're going to burn more calories for the next 48 hours after your workout's over, right? Which means absolutely nothing, but yes, go ahead. Which means absolutely nothing. <laughs> but you say that to them and they're like, oh, that sounds great. And then you say, oh, we do core every day to make sure your core gets strong or whatever, right? We do this exercise to make sure that you, this, right? If you explain your programming, you don't explain your programming. You just say, we do this because it helps you with this result. We do this because it helps you with this result. But you don't explain the linear, the block, the way the reps are going, da, da, da. You can, your coaches can explain that to your members if they have questions about it during session and stuff, because they're a member already, right? But when they're a prospect, you walk them through the program and you go, we do this because it helps you do this. We do this because it helps you do that. We do this because it helps you do that. You don't go into the nuts and bolts. You just say, this helps you blah, right? And that that's how you'd explain it. But that's pretty much the programming, guys. I mean, how's programming? Make sure you keep people safe and give them a sense of autonomy. Couldn't agree more, man. Guys, we set up a couple of cool things for you below. So we set up first and foremost, our best training ever, where we help you add 10 members to your gym in seven days with zero ad spend. 10, I'll repeat that again, 10 members, seven days, <laughs> zero ad spend. That is the way it works. Uh, you can get, get that below. So just click that link below and you can pick up that training right there. You could also become a member to our Facebook group where we have a lot of we're building a community of like-minded gym owners there and again if you guys are interested in booking a call with us so we can help you with your programming with how you're going to do this for a small group just click that link below hop on the phone with us and we can help you explode your business this was anthony and jimmy fitness profit multiplier and we are